even for those who are watching right now around the world, and, and we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we are that's where you are watching now, but we, we also step forward to uh, begin to air on YouTube. So we want you to subscribe this afternoon or this morning. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know that you are watching this and it's been blessing you. Uh, for sec 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I want to address uh, a spirit that is being, if we, if we just be seriously mindful of it, it will help us move forward in our race for the kingdom. And that is the spirit of fear. Amen. Everybody says spirit of fear. Spirit of fear. What that spirit does is that it can crumble you and cause you to miss so much of what God has for you as a child of God. Amen. So we have to watch that spirit. Verse, six, verse 7. Let me go, let me start from verse 6. So it will make sense to you what um, the scripture is saying. It says, For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Verse 7. For, this, for the Spirit of God, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid or fearful, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Those are the three spirits God gave us. Verse 6, Paul was addressing Timothy as a young preacher. He said, I want you to know that, he said, verse, verse 6, he said, for this reason I remind you to fan into flame. What farming, to fan into flame means to stir up your gift. Everybody has giftings that God is asking us to stir up today. If you never use your gift, it will die in you. And you go to the grave without using those gifts. So that's why it's paramount that we must, um, we must stir up, we must uh, um, activate it. How do you activate the gift in you? By using it. If I stop preaching, that gift will not be activated. And I will die without using, and it, it, I will feel so sorry for myself if I do not use that gift that God has given to me. Can the church say amen? amen. So it is very important that we must stay up. He said, say, I want you to stay up that gift uh, when I lay hands on you. There's something about laying hands on somebody and people get. Uh, um, uh, anointed. Verse 7. It says, For the spirit God gave us is not a spirit to fear. God doesn't want you to be afraid. There is just so much God has for you. He don't want you to be afraid. You don't have to wake up and be scared. He no. said, What I have given you or what God is giving to us is the spirit of power. That's what God is giving to us. Amen. A spirit of power to conquer, to overcome, to possess your possession, to take what belongs to you. Yes. That's what God is giving to us. Some might not be ready, but some are ready. God says, I want you to possess your possession. This is your time to claim what belongs to you. Amen. I have given you power and authority. The word power there means ability. God said, I've given you an ability to go to work, open up businesses. If you have to preach, preach whatever you have to do, do it. I've given you all of this. So you don't have to wake up and be afraid as to what can happen to you. You don't have to wake up and be scared as to, will there be food on my table? There's a lot of jobs. Go get a job. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go and get money. Feed yourself, feed your family. Clothe yourself. He said, I have, what I have given you is the spirit of power. Then the next thing is love. Look at your neighbor and say love. love. The ability to love one another unconditionally. 
It's very important to love. It's a very important key Jesus came to introduce to us. Love. Amen. Then the next thing he said, power, love, and of sound mind. Mm -hmm. God wants us to have a sound mind. Yes. He doesn't want your mind to be messed up. No. Uh -uh. If your mind is messed up, pray for deliverance. God will deliver you today, not tomorrow, right now. You have the ability to control your own mind. There is no evil spirit that has the power to control your mind but God. He said, I have given you this power to control yourself, to, to, to be self-controlled. I want you to know who you are or who you are. I have given you power and authority. Not the spirit to be as afraid. To be fearful means to, to lack faith. People who are constantly afraid, afraid of the unknown. Mm. Afraid of, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Mm. I don't know if I'm going to live or not. You will live. All you have to do is just relax and have faith in God. Amen. What is one good definition that I saw? Fear is an unpleasant emotion. Write that down. Fear is an unpleasant emotion. It's just an emotion. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. Likely to cause pain or threat. It's an emotion. A human being is divided into three parts. Write this down. Every human being is divided into three parts. You have the body, you have the soul, and you have the spirit. Three things make up a human being. The problem that we have is not the spirit. The problem we have is the, the soul. And the soul itself, write this down, is divided into three parts. You have the mind, you have the will, and you have the emotions. So you can never allow emotions to rule your life. Emotions, the spirit of emotions will make you make wrong decisions. Yes, every time. Emotions will drag you into a place you never thought you would be. Because we constantly just make decisions without thinking, without really looking at our far ahead, the future. God doesn't want us to just make an immediate decision and just take off without thinking. You have to think. Look at the neighbor and say, think. Hey. Ask the Holy Spirit, is this what you want me to do? <coughs> Emotions. So people are, are, are scared, are afraid, because they are emotionally carried away. That's why they are afraid. It's a spirit that must be killed and destroyed and sent into the pit of hell today Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. So, you know, it's a spirit that causes you to anticipate that there is danger. Oh, maybe I'm going to hit somebody. Oh, somebody is going to hit me. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, maybe I don't know if I'm going to live. And you are, you are panicking. It causes people to panic. And God does not want you to look at himself. Look at how big God is. Moses, God told Moses, he said, go and tell Pharaoh. Moses said, who should I say sent me? He said, go and tell Pharaoh that I am that I am sent me. Mm -hmm. Look at the neighbor and say, I am that I am. I am that I am. That's the only definition. That's the only way we can define God. That's the only way we can test who God is. It's the only English language that we can use in qualifying God. There's no other name that you can call God. Call him Jehovah. Call him Yahweh. Call him every other name. All of that is good. But his name is I am that I am. Amen. <sighs> Amen. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Let me take you a little further to this subject, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Let us look at what God told Joshua. Hallelujah. Joshua was a young man of God that, was, that stayed obedient to Moses, learned a whole lot from Moses. Then when Moses died, 
God gave the mantle to Joshua. And then, then God began to tell Joshua now. He said, Joshua, let me let you know. He said, have I not commanded you? Mm -hmm. Be strong and courageous. Yes. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you forever. Or wherever you go. Yes. That's what God told Joshua. He said, have I not commanded you? Joshua, uh, Joshua is no longer alive. Moses is no longer alive. Who, who, who does this commandment pass to us? We are this last generation that are going to be receiving what God has spoken to our forefathers. So God is telling you today, He said, I command, He said, I have commanded, have I not commanded you? Be strong. God does not like weak people. You can never achieve anything if you're weak. If a man is weak, if a woman is weak, you can never possess what God said is yours. Christian race is, is, is like going to war front. You can never go to the war with your, with your, uh, uh, with, with your gun and you're playing around like today I don't know if I'm going to go, if I'm not going to go, you are, we are fearful. No, God wants you to be strong. Look at your neighbor and say, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. And do not be discouraged. He said, be courageous. Yes. Be encouraged. Yes. God always wants you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. He said, be encouraged. Be encouraged. Be a courageous person. Yes. He said, he said, I want you to know that wherever you go, I will be with you. It's a guarantee from God that God is going to always be there wherever you go. Yes, Lord. Psalms 27 verse 1. Let me move a little further. We are dealing with the spirit of fear. Because that spirit can ruin you if you don't watch it. You are trying to start a business. All of a sudden, you were excited thinking about it, writing all the manifestos and whatever you had to do, a, a, a business plan. You were excited, looking at it, excited, you were fasting, you were praying. And the moment the time has come to execute that business, a certain, all of a sudden, from nowhere, a spirit of fear comes upon you. And then, what the spirit of fear does, it brings you doubt. It makes you to start doubting what you are trying to do, number two. It makes you to start doubting yourself whether you can really do it or not. Then you start calling friends to find out should I or should I not. Guess what? A lot of friends don't want to see you succeed. Why are you calling your friends to find out you are the one God showed a revelation? He showed it to you. Why you want to call other? Why you want to call friends? You know they don't want you to do it. You know they jealous you, they don't want you to do it. Why are you calling them? All you have to do is stick with God who gave you the revelation. Go ahead and carry it out, you will succeed. Even if you fail, and if you fail, start all in. If that, if that area does not favor you, there are thousands and millions of areas where you can succeed in business. Shout hallelujah. Psalm 27. Verse 1. He said, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The word Lord there in the Hebrew means sovereign. The Lord, the sovereign Lord, is my light. So everywhere you go daily, remember that. He follows you, He provides you light. Even when you are walking in the dark. He's, he represents light in front of you to make sure that you are not consumed or destroyed mm -hmm. by the enemy. Yeah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my salvation. He gave me salvation. He guarantees me eternal life. Yeah. That's the word salvation. He freed me from all my sins. Yeah. Let's go a little further. Psalms 23. 
Come on, verse 1. The spirit of fear. <clears throat> it started by saying, Psalms 23, if you're there. Psalms 23. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no what? Evil. There's always, we always walk all the time through shadows of death as we drive on the freeway. Yeah. You all know how Houston yeah. is. Yeah. So many people are coming to the city now, so he's bringing more cars in. Yeah. But, you, but God is saying that even though you are in the midst of traffic yeah. or your airplane is, is, is wobbling in the air, I want you to know that I'm with you always. Yeah. I have guaranteed you as my children that I will be with you. I will never leave you until the end of the age. Amen. So it's a guarantee from Psalms 23. Because the Lord is our leader. Yes. <laughs> He's our shepherd. Yes. He shepherds me 24 hours. He leads me beside the still waters. But verse 4 is where I was really going. He said, I will fear no evil. Mm. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, we are constantly going through, even when you are in the restaurant, mm -hmm. you never can know, you know, what kind of food they are going to serve you. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many people choked up while they are eating and they die. Mm -hmm. So wherever you are, we are constantly around the shadow of death. But what God is saying, I want to tell you this morning that you should not be what? Afraid. Afraid. Let's go to Psalms 34, 4 through 8. Psalms 34, 4 through the 8. Psalms 34. I love this one. Let me give you time to look at it. Are you, is everybody there? Yes. Psalms 34, 4 through 8. He says, I sought the Lord, meaning I, 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 I inquire of the Lord. And he answered me. Isn't that something that somebody will just say something, God, this is what I want, and God will just hear you? He delivered me from all my fears. The, the, the greatest prayer we are going to pray this morning that the Lord please deliver all of us from all our greatest fears. Amen. Fear of the unknown. Mm. Verse 5. Those who looked at him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. When you put your faith in God, Psalms 1 to the 1 says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my head. My head comes from God who made the heavens and the earth. Yeah. It seems like the psalmist, when he was praying to God, he was looking up. Amen. Those who looked at God are radiant. When you when you submit your life to God or Jesus and you allow the Holy Spirit to be your God, He causes you to illuminate. Illumination. He puts His everlasting light on you, wherever you are. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And He, he makes sure that he, never, he will never allow you to be put to shame. Verse, verse 6. He said, This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. Mm -hmm. The word poor there is not representing that you don't a person who don't have anything. It's talking about people who are struggling in the kingdom, people who are trying to get up and know more about who Jesus is. So 
and, 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 and God, so Jesus has the power to reach out to those type of people as well. Those are in, could be even destitute, those that are rejected, the homeless, or those who just got born again, or those who are trying to get born again. All of that is inclusive of the world uh, poor. This poor man cried out to God. It doesn't matter what your name is called, or your nationality, or your economical class. Amen. God hears the cries of everybody. Yes. You may think that you'll be so far away from God, or you'll be so backward, or like things have been so backward for you. But I want you to know that God does not look at you the way you no. see yourself. No. He has the power to give you everything that you never even ask for. Amen. We are in Psalm 34, 4 through 8. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He said, This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. Amen. Number 7, verse 7. He said, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. That is Psalms 34, verse 7. Yes, sir. I want you to know that you are not alone. The angels are watching over you. The angels always encamp around us. Meaning, the angels always surround us everywhere, wherever we are. There is no one minute that, or one second of your life that the angel is not uh, released to watch over you. Okay. Number 8. He said, now, taste and see. <laughs> he said, I want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the, is the one who takes refuge in him. He said, I want you to taste. You know how to taste food. You know how you taste food. And you say, oh, this is really, really, uh, this is tasteful. It's, you know, it has... No, no, I love the taste of this food. He said, now, I want you to taste who God is. Yes. Taste of the goodness of him. Yes. Taste yes. of his power. Yes. Taste of his glory. glory. Taste Hallelujah. of his authentic oil. Yes. Yes. Taste, taste of his creativity. Yes. Taste of who he is. Yes. Verse 8. He said, he said, I want you to taste and see that the Lord is what? Good. good. Uh, everywhere you go, God is always good. Amen. It doesn't matter if you're just fired from your job, God is good. Because if you're fired from your job, He'll give you another. No matter what happens to you, God is always there to fix it. He'll give you something that is much better. Some of you are in a job and God said, well, you know what? As long as you stick with this job, you might not go to where I'm taking you. Mm -hmm. He, he allows you to lose it. Mm -hmm. So he can create opportunity for you to get another one. Amen. Or he might look at you, you know, I, I, I just came back from Little Rock, Arkansas, and there's this lady, she was a supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, a supervisor uh, in the state job uh, for 28 years. And we were eating Chinese food, you know, I just... I look at her and I say, oh my God, I shook my head. He said, well, I said, well, 28 years, you work? I said, he said, yeah. And she had hard time resigning. If you never, how can, how can you work all your life for somebody else? Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit of fear that grips people that if they, I'm not saying go quit your job, but there's, a, there's, a, there's how many years you can, you can be a slave to somebody. If you never step out in faith and start your own, you never know that you can make it. It could be really complicated for two years, you might not get a profit. You might not be able to buy all the necessary clothes you're supposed to buy. You might not be able to get all you needed to do, but, but you stick with it. But eventually, you can make it. I'm coming to a close. Psalm 56. The spirit of what? Fear. Never you let that 
Spirit hold you in moving forward. That Spirit can hold you from moving forward. Before I read, because that is about the last scripture I have for us, I didn't want to bore you this morning with thousands of scriptures. When you, when I'm writing, you know, it's keep coming and coming and coming, and I don't want to, when you preach more than 30 minutes, you, you throw people off, they, they are, their attention span is, is, is <laughs> diminishes. Before I give you this last scripture, um, when I first came to this country, um, I, I, I signed up at TSU, enrolled in TSU in economics, how to get my first degree. And I got a job with uh, Frenchies, uh, an OST there by, by Calhoun. And, and this guy was, you know, working with us. He was the one rotating chicken and, and mixing them up. So I was in charge of frying chicken. That's what, I, that's what was my first job coming to this country. So, um, so after a while, I, I became just so sick of, you know, tired of, you know, like, you know, I was just around the fire, the degree of the chicken we put in the oven, uh, in the fry, it's about 350 degrees or 375. So I said, let me step out. We we're living in around the third world area there. TSU was so close. So I step out in faith. I have a car. So I, I moved to Southwest. So I picked up a job with uh, um, Domino's Pizza. Mm -hmm. So I would go to people's homes and deliver pizza. So um, we had this brother, and I was making more money here because when I go and deliver a pizza, if it is like eight twenty-five, some some people will give me a twenty dollars. Say keep change. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I go home with fifty dollars, sometimes seventy, sometimes eighty, sometimes a hundred, or sometimes more. So I told this brother, I said, come to Southwest. You can make more money in, in delivering Domino's pizza. He said, oh, I cannot drive on the freeway. He was so scared. He's much older than me. And he's so scared. He was so scared to drive on the freeway. And he never drove, he never came until I even resigned from there and went to Houston Post. He never came to Southwest. So every time I go, every time I go to the third world area, I see I still see him. His name is Achebe. I still see him frying chicken. Now. <laughs> I don't know where he is now. But the point I'm making is that because of the spirit of fear, he missed that opportunity of increasing his income. Yes. You can miss what God has for you because you are so afraid. God detests people who are afraid. It means that you don't have faith in him. God wants us, this is 26th of March, that this is, uh, today is 26th Sunday, March 2023. There is plenty of time for us to make amen. Huh. That's why God gave me this, this subject. Amen. I know that if I, if I finish speaking and I'm asking how many of you felt that this was for you, it will be many hands. Mm -hmm. So I already know that because it's a spirit that we have to deal with daily, the amen. spirit of fear. Psalms 56. Psalms 56. Verse 3 and 4. Psalms 56. Let me have somebody read it. Psalms 56. But when I am afraid, I will put my confidence in you. When I, when he said, but when I, I am afraid, when I'm scared, when I don't, when I, when I lose my thoughts, um, when I'm, I can't seem to figure out what tomorrow will bring, I should put my trust in God. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Yes, I will trust the promises of God. <clears throat> and since I am trusting him, what can me and man do to me? Thank you. It says, in God, my translation says, in God who, whose word I praise. In God whose 
world I what? Praise. In God I trust. You know, um, when you go to a place like Nigeria, where I come from, a lot of the big cars, big um, uh, not, uh, those trucks you see, they will say, "In God I trust." In God I trust. In God I trust. Everywhere you go, you see that logo. In God I trust. Mm -hmm. Probably this is where they got it from. In God I trust, and I, I am not afraid. What can mere mortal or where, what can mere man do to me? The greatest thing you don't want to do to yourself is to allow human people to, to intimidate you. Mm -hmm. Supervisors to intimidate you. Friends to intimidate you. You can, you can, become, you can become what you set your mind for. Anything you set your heart for, you can have it. Amen. It's not magic. It's not... It's not Whatever you want, you can have it. Some of you, I said on Friday night, probably more people on Friday than today, but, but I told them, I said, you know, you don't even know how blessed you are to be an American. Yeah. There's a lot of resources in this country that you can tap into. A lot of job opportunities. You know how long it took us to travel, get from where we are to run here? I'm not saying that it's the most secure place in the world, but God has made this country, he's blessed America. Yes, he has. So there is no reason why a, a, a person who has been able to step his or her feet into this country should be afraid of nothing. Amen. Psalm 46, 1 through 3. Let me close with this. And we have to read it. Because, you know, I, today I really want... I want to close on time today. Psalms 46, 1 through 3. Let me give you a, a, a chance to open your scriptures. Psalms 46, 1 through 3. Are you there? Amen. It says, God is my refuge. Meaning, God is my, uh, my, my protector. God is my refuge and strength. Mm -hmm. He gives me strength when I'm weak. Yeah. When I'm poor, he makes me rich. A very present help in trouble. Always remember that. God is a very present help when we are troubled. It seems like we are constantly troubled. Why? Because man is insatiable. Man is always in want of something. You have 10 cars and you see somebody who has a Rolls Royce, you want a Rolls Royce. And the next time a, another friend has a jet, you say, oh, I wish I could have a jet. When you have one jet and you see somebody who has five, you say, oh, I wish I have another second jet. So man is, insert, man is built with the spirit of insatiability. Meaning that no matter what you have, the tendency is there to want to have more. He said, but so, so because of that, we run into a lot of trouble and the things we cannot get and, and we try to get them, we can't get them, then we become troubled. And that's, that's what we call greed. Look at the number say greed. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way. <laughs> you can be in the middle of earthquake, though mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. You can, you, there was one time, you know, there was a hurricane here. We were in the other place here, and the People's cars were sweeping on, on water. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where I was, but you know, one of my friends came from Fresno, James Riley, mm -hmm. and he was trying to come to the church, but the car they were driving was on top of the water. <laughs> but they God mm -hmm. saved those people. Mm -hmm. But even in the middle of that type of catastrophe, God said, relax, but I will, I will take care of you. Mm -hmm. 
I will be with you. Yes. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. Yes. That is the highest guarantee. Man can guarantee you. Uh, Supervisor will guarantee you. The Government will guarantee you. But their guarantee, I'm not saying that they didn't mean it, but because they are human, they their, their guarantee will not last for a long That's time. But if you stick with God and all, he'll take care of you. Yes. Though, he said, though it waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. You see God as your refuge and your strength. Your very present help in time of trouble. Never you let the spirit of fear from today grip you so much that you lose your concentration. Mm -hmm. You lose your your goal yes. and the vision God gave you. You have to all life is a fight. You have to yes. keep fighting. The day you stop fighting is the day you die. Yes. I mean, if God wants to take me home, he can, I mean, why do you have to be so afraid even to die? Jesus wasn't scared. He went straight to the cross. He said, take this cup away from me when initially he was in trouble because he had that human side of him. But eventually he said, not my will, let your will be done. And all of a sudden, Thomas did him once and went and kissed him. And the people saw him and they are, they are, they are Judas is Caleb. Went to go and kiss him and, 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 and he was arrested. He suffered on the cross. They put that tongue on him, put that old rugged cross on him. I was in Jerusalem looking at the, the, the healing, the healing places he had to go through, stony places he had to go through, barefooted, bleeding all over the, all his all over his body. But he was consistent. He stayed. Yeah. He could have he could have caused those those uh, uh, John John chapter John chapter. 18 verse 36. Let me close with that. If you see, read it all. I really want to make sure that I'm giving you that right scripture. Uh, John chapter 18 verse 36. Jesus could have, Jesus could have just waved his hand. He has the power to have waved his hand and just kill all of those people. But he didn't do that. Let us see what he said here as I close. John chapter 18, verse 36. Then Jesus answered. Then Jesus answered. I am not an earthly king. Mm -hmm. If I were, my followers would have fought when I was arrested by the Jewish leader. Mm -hmm. Other translation my is not of the war. Mm -hmm. He says, My kingdom is what? Not of this world. They thought he came to be the ruler, to be the king. He said, No, I didn't come for this. Uh, earthly kingdom? No. I didn't come for this earthly kingdom. If, if, if this was what I came for, remember that scripture. If this was what I came for, I would have uh, commanded just one angel to help me fight this fight. So if, if our forerunner, who is Christ, went through what he went through, and he was killed. None of us have been killed yet. Jesus was killed, mm -hmm. crucified, yes. buried. Mm -hmm. They covered him with so much heavy, heavy stones mm -hmm. and surrounded him with a lot of uh, hefty, uh, very trained soldiers mm -hmm. to make sure because there were rumors was going on that uh, they say he said he will rise the third day. We want to see how he's going to rise the third day. The rumor was rumoring that some of his uh, disciples would come overnight and and yeah and steal the body. So they surrounded him with so many soldiers. 
But when it was time for God, for Jesus to resurrect on the third day, I want to say to you, lift your hands up, I want to say to you this morning that whatever God has said is for you. Yeah. When the time comes, it's only when the time has not come, then you will not see the manifestation. But if God said it, just watch it. But all you have to do is stay consistent in doing what he tells you to do. And that is one place where I have come to. I have come to that place where I, I know that this is what I'm called to do. And I'm determined and I'm, I'm made up my mind that this is what I'm going to do until I die. When it was time for him to resurrect, God sent an angel from heaven. And the angel came and rolled away the stone. He didn't have to do anything. <laughs> and I want to say to you that when it's time for God to do what he says he will do for you it will not be your own personal effort yes, yes. let us understand now I want you to talk to God for yourself that that spirit of fear that spirit of fear that ravages people's lives and causes people to uh, uh, people's lives to be stunted and causes people to miss so much of what God has for them. Open your mouth now, it's time for you to talk. Come on, come on, come on, come on. That, that from today, that spirit of fear, I don't want you, I command you to come out of my life. Open your mouth. I command you, open your mouth. Because God wants to hear you. I have, I, have, I have given you what he gave me. So don't, don't keep your mouth shut. Because that spirit, you know, um, that spirit run, run, run through everybody, including me who is preaching now. I am not completely exempt from that spirit. So every day by day, I'm asking God, open your mouth. I'm asking God to take away that fear, that spirit of fear away from me. As long as we are human, we will always have to go through that spirit of fear. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open your mouth. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say something, say something. God is waiting for you to say something to him. You just need at least five minutes to, to respond to what God. Come on, 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 come on. Come on. Spirit of fear. In Jesus' name. Amen. Is there anybody here who felt like they need a prayer? That they need a prayer of deliverance from the spirit of fear. If you are the one, come and stand out here. Spirit of fear, anybody who felt that word for us for them. That's how people get delivered. If you never honestly say it and make sure that's what comes to you. Anybody else? Spirit of fear. Anybody else who felt like I believe that word was for me. Thank God I'm here. Anybody in the spirit of fear? Lift your hands up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you right now. We magnify you because you are marvelous, because you are wonderful, because you are great. I thank you for um, bringing this precious uh, uh, children of yours uh, for deliverance today. 
from the spirit of fear. God, I, I pray supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to bring healing yes. and deliverance to your people today. Amen. That whatever they have set their heart to accomplish this year, 2023, mm -hmm. that the spirit of fear will not stop. Yes, yes. That you will move forward and accomplish destiny yes. in the name of Jesus. Thank you. you will never take a decision in a hurry because you are afraid yes. of the unknown. Yes, yes. I pray the spirit of courage and strength. Yes. Mm -hmm. That even when yes, yes. you are weak, God makes you strong. Yes. When you are poor, he makes you rich. In the name of Jesus, we come against the spirit of fear. Yes. What God wants you to have is the spirit of power, yes. love, and a sound mind. In the name that is above every name. Yes. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I pray for supernatural strength upon yes. this precious Amen. children. Amen. Man. I pray the blessings of God upon your life that make it rich and added no sorrow. Yes. I pray wholeness. Yes, yes. I pray supernatural wholeness. Yes, yes. I pray the spirit of boldness. Yes. That every gift, gift is in you. Mm -hmm. That Thank God you. placed upon your life Thank you, Lord. will never be aborted. Yes. In the name of Jesus and the little devotion. I pray for everyone standing right now. Yes, yes. right now. Thank you, Lord. I bind the spirit of fear. Yes. I bind death. Thank you, Lord. I bind calamity. Thank yes, you, Lord. yes. I release upon you yes. the spirit of power, power Lord. love, and of sound mind. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for honoring your word. I give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have a seat with you. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's take off ties and offering our media. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, call it.